Many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, is it worth it to buy Arch Enemy, Nicol Bolas? Much like the original Arch Enemy release, Arch Enemy Nicol Bolas is a many versus one format, where multiple players team up against a single opponent. This opponent is given the advantage of scheme cards to grant them powered up benefits throughout the game, and thus the team must work together to defeat the Arch Enemy. But has Arch Enemy Nicol Bolas finally solved the problem of an arch enemy that's too powerful to overcome? Or is this just another in a long line of good in theory, but bad in practice alternative formats for a game that's just not made to be played this way? Let's take a look. Please note, this video is a review of the product Arch Enemy Nicol Bolas and assumes that you as viewer is familiar with the format. If you would like to learn how to play Arch Enemy itself, please see my instructional video here, which is linked in the description. This video will tell you everything you need to know to learn and play Arch Enemy. Arch Enemy Nicol Bolas contains the following. Four 60-card decks made up 100% of reprints, each headlined by four non-foil Planeswalker cards with new art, a 20-card scheme deck containing 20 all-new unique schemes, an organizer tray and appropriate deck boxes, a selection of double-faced tokens, and a lifekeeper dial. Playable right out of the box without any additions, Arch Enemy Nicol Bolas has an MSRP of $59.99. So before we talk about how successful and enjoyable the gameplay of this new installment is, let's examine the financial value of the cards you are getting. With four 60-card decks totaling 240 magic cards, as well as the 20 unique scheme cards, there's a lot being offered here, but not much of it has individual card value. In fact, of those 240 cards, only four of them are worth above $5, the highest being Gideon Jura at 10. The remaining cards of any value are only between $1 to $3, and there's only 16 of them. This means that the total sum value of cards worth $1 or more is $70.08, already in excess of the $59.99 MSRP. However, of these cards, very few are really going to have any application outside of the Arch Enemy decks themselves, which is likely by design. As I will discuss in just a moment, this is a self-contained set, akin to a board game, and I am positive part of the deck design was a selection of cards that were likely not going going to have a huge role in other formats, and this was likely intentional to help keep the set intact, and of course copies on shelves for those who really do want to play Arch Enemy. In addition to all of this are the 20 unique Arch Enemy cards. While it's hard to place a value on these, many of the previous Arch Enemy cards had values ranging between $1 to $5 each. Now there's no way to tell where these schemes will be at in a year, but even ascribing a very reasonable minimal value of $1 each to these new schemes means there's another 20 dollars worth of cards here, meaning that this product, which costs $59.99, has at least $100 worth of cards, albeit most are low-end ones, as well as a large selection of jank. But I don't think financial value matters much, if at all here. That's right, you heard me. While worth looking at, I feel we can largely disregard individual cards included because this is not your typical Magic the Gathering product. It isn't for playing in any established format, nor is it for upgrading the included decks or stripping them to build new ones. This is a closed system, a self-contained Magic the Gathering experience, and in that way, we should put the majority of our emphasis on gameplay, because this, more than any product made before, is a Magic the Gathering board game. We've been seeing a lot of Magic the Gathering skins lately. From Puzzle Quest to Minecraft to the Memorpager Cryptic Studios is making, Magic the Gathering IP has been placed like a sticker on a lot of things that are in no way Magic the Gathering. But this is something different. The original Arch Enemy decks were sold individually, much like Commander Precons now are. You would buy one of them, get a selection of scheme cards, and one pre-built Arch Enemy deck. And from there, you would need to find two to three other players who had purchased, ideally, different Arch Enemy decks, and then sit down and play. 
But this, this contains all four decks, constructed with specific design towards proper balance and interaction. There is a clear arch enemy deck within here, Nicol Bolas's, made specifically to interact with the arch enemy schemes. The three Gatewatch decks are designed to offer different styles of support and emphasis to one another. And it's all right here in this compact box. Although it is a format variation, it's still 100% Magic the Gathering. You're not just playing a different game with magic artwork pasted on top. You are playing Magic the Gathering itself. The same rules, the same mechanics, the same card interactions that makes magic magic. Playing with 60 card constructed decks, but as part of a complete set of decks with that format variance. It's the Magic the Gathering board game, and that by itself is amazing. I especially love the way in which this compact box has the organizer, fitting all the pieces together so efficiently. The deck boxes are really cheap though, thin cardboard, particularly thin, and they could have stood to be a little fancier, but they do hold double sleeved decks. Sadly, once you sleeve your schemes and your tokens, they do not fit in the organizer, but I'm still a fan of this setup. There's even a spot for the tokens in the Life Keeper. What a fun assortment and a fun layout. When Dual Deck Anthology first came out, many described that as being like an MTG board game, a box you could pull out with friends, give a deck to, and sit down and play. But those decks were never designed to be completely interactable with one another. There's just no balance between various dual decks, other than the one that they were originally paired with. So for example, Liliana's dual deck doesn't necessarily play well against elves. But here we have four decks designed to be played multiplayer in a three versus is one fashion, with the scheme cards giving a proper advantage to the arch enemy. It's the Magic the Gathering board game, more than anything else Wizards has ever made or licensed someone else to make. And that's fabulous by itself. But how well does it play? Well, the original arch enemy schemes were highly criticized for being overly powerful. It was very, very rare that the arch enemy would lose because the scheme cards provided them with such an overwhelming advantage. Here, scheme cards have all been powered down considerably, to such a point that I feel wizards may have gone too far in the other direction. In all my games, playing and testing this, the arch enemy always had the uphill battle, and lost most of the time. Yes, yes, I know we've all watched the game now, where Jimmy and Josh and company play this and the arch enemy won both games. But having now played a lot of this myself, I do feel that in the long run, this is much more slanted towards the arch enemy being at a disadvantage, but not much of one. Actually, what I've really enjoyed is using the older arch enemy cards to power up the arch enemy deck a little bit. This is tricky as the new arch enemy cards are designed for very specific interactions with the Bolas deck, right down to providing correct Grixis colors and creatures, that sort of thing. And that brings me to one of the more disappointing parts of arch enemy the lack of customization and interaction with other decks. You see, Magic has always been about customization. Your choices in building a deck that reflect you, whether it's your personality or your play style, or just the strategy that you see, the puzzle you're trying to solve when constructing that deck. And then when you sit down to battle your friends or your opponents, you get to experience their choices in making their their deck, but unfortunately, with arch enemy Nicol Bolas, that doesn't really work with other decks other than the ones included. Unlike the plane chase format, which is awesome with any set of multiplayer decks, especially as an addition to Commander, arch enemy simply does not translate well, and arch enemy Nicol Bolas is more or less hardwired through its scheme cards to only work and interact with these included decks, right down to the very colors and patterns of colors the Bolas schemes look for. From adding Grixis mana to expecting exactly three opponents in three different colors, swapping these decks for your commander decks just doesn't translate. And this affects replayability. 
listen, getting a game of this on board game night with Magic the Gathering friends is fun once or twice, but as the decks remain fixed, and let's be honest, as they remain simplistic, as these are little more than intro pack or planeswalker decks, the experience is likely to become repetitive and unsatisfying. While it is really great to have an actual self-contained Magic the Gathering board game to pull off the shelf, the limited nature of this as a standalone game is likely going to leave it there, on the shelf, collecting dust. A fun addition to the collection, but not likely a common craving to be played. Final conclusion, Arch Enemy Nicol Bolas is essentially a Magic the Gathering board game. It is self-contained, able to be played right out of the box with three to four friends, and is not just a reskin of a different game, but rather is real Magic the Gathering gameplay with real Magic the Gathering decks. In terms of that gameplay, this is more on the level of something between a plain Walker deck or dual decks. And while there are some balance issues in regards to the Arch Enemy versus Gatewatch decks, they are minor, and the biggest problem with gameplay is just the lack of replayability, with games getting stale fast and no easy way to play this with other decks. Despite there being reasonable financial value of individual cards, the cards themselves have little to no relevance for players and collectors. In other words, there are no chase rares or mythics or other needed reprints here. No original cards other than schemes and only the Planeswalker cards themselves have new art, and they aren't even in foil. Nonetheless, this is a very good product and possibly a great deal of interest to casual players, players who love flavor, or just players who like to break up more intense gameplay for a fun evening with friends while still playing Magic. Overall grade, this isn't excellent, but it's very good, and that makes it a solid B. I hope very much this video has been of some help to you. You can help me out by remembering to like, share, subscribe, or just visiting my Patreon page and supporting Talarian Community College, where donations as little as $1 a month really do keep this channel going and growing strong. So, thank you. And this program was made possible thanks to a sponsorship from Card Kingdom, as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. So, thank you.